Installing. Please stand by. It was a lot of fun. And there was a player in there, I can't remember his name, but he was playing team games with us. Apparently he's a guy from the UK, he watches my streams if you're in here, man. Hi, thanks for fucking kicking my ass every time. But uh, he's a guy from the UK and he moved to Japan. He was playing on release with us and uh, he was playing with Gormented actually in team games as well. And my god, the guy's a beast, the guy's pretty good. Like, not gonna lie, that was, that was really tough. I think there was only one team game where I was doing pretty good against him on uh, Pitiless, I think it was. But anyways, enough of me. Let's enjoy me talking about Andrew versus Bane in game number one. Initialized. And my god, is it a relief to see another map that hasn't been played that much during the Ragal season, but there have been a couple of picks here and there. It is Dark Side Aftermath, made by Mega Tank and was part of the Dark Tournament tree. And this was actually one of those maps where it was, it had a little darkish uh, tone to it because of the oils, like you had some exploring to do to get some extra value. But on the other hand, it was also pretty competitive. There wasn't really an advantage or a disadvantage on either side. So that's why, because we had a shortage of maps during the regal season, we decided to add this to the pool. And we have Mr. Bane starting on the right side playing as Germany, as usual. And we have Mr. Anju, the Australian legend who has provided us a lot of entertainment during these master seasons with the demo truck, especially this season. And he is playing once again the destructive power of Ukraine. But he is going for a rack skips here and Bane is pretty aggressive with the rifle so far. He hasn't seen any presence from Anju yet, so he's getting a little bit suspicious here. He's going to check it out, trying to go for a split in case that there is a static defense queued up. But because it's a rack skip, that is not the case. So Ben is trying to go for a war factory block here. Unfortunately, that is not going to work with an APC coming out of it. Regardless, Ben is going to go for the power plant snipe, but Andrew actually already built another one. Very nice cleanup for uh, for Andrew here. Nice reaction with just queuing up another power plant before it w before it even got destroyed. He already knew what was coming, therefore he didn't lose a lot of uh, macro timing there. But he certainly dealt with Bane's whole main army pretty efficiently there with the APC, going for some crushes. And now he's pretty much in control of the middle. Still has to do something about that because obviously it's it is costing him money. Yo, Mega Tank. I think I missed something there, but thanks for the reset, man. Holy shit, five months in a row. Good to have you back, man. Welcome to the cautious army. Alright, there is Angie right now in three minutes, has four harvesters, can start unit production here. Five harvesters already, let's see what Bane was up to, Bane was going double red. Still on, still on two harvesters, three right now, I think he's a little bit behind, not sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. He's trying to go for the oil now. There is Andrew coming along the way. He might be able to snipe that engineer from that distance. And the medics are not enough to keep him alive. There's Bane once again sacrificing his light tank to go for the power plant instead. Has costed him an engineer though, pretty much. Trying to go for some crushes here, but doesn't get any other rockets. Ooh, and those last two rockets. Still connected, forcing Bane to 
here. Get back to that SD ASAP. So we're still going to see a battle here over the middle. But usually that's the case early game. But instead we're going to see it here at minute 4. Still one oil uncaptured and nobody has gone for the communication center yet. I don't think Andrew has an, has made an engineer to begin with. But uh, in my case, I think that is still worth. At least Bane did. Did rebuild another one. Uh, hasn't gone for this oil yet. Um, I wonder if he forgot about it. It's pretty much free at this point. But uh, he's insisting on putting pressure in the middle here. Using the light tank to remove the barbed wire so he can capture on the safe side. And that is going to give him a lot of vision, I'm surprised. And you didn't bother with trying to compete with that. Ooh, well, never mind. Almost got a sneaky snipe there. Engineer barely survived. And Bing will be able to capture that. Here's Anju moving out the main MCV and just walling that off. Interesting. Very interesting play here. Bane sees the walls. He's moving up the rockets. But can get a good shot. Huh. Very interesting. Meanwhile, Anju is just expanding his eco in the south. And he's moving up the main MCV. To apply pressure here, or is he going to for that? Or match first. So he's going to heavily invest in eco here and take map control really fast. And I think that is. In this case, the way he's doing it is pretty, it's pretty good because if he puts a ref down here, I think it's very easy to defend this when your MCD is on this position. So there's only like two passages that the enemy can get through. Meanwhile, the activity has switched to the north side of the map. And there's a... is it a potential Bane MCD? No, not yet. Retreats in time, that's a huge army from both players. Andrew has a small favor here, but I think that difference is sitting in the south side of the map. Andrew has two flame tower just sitting there shooting at the infantry. They will have to retreat here. That's, a, that's the third medium tank going down here in the process. That is a lot in this stage of the game. Very hard for Bane to defend. You know, this, this, uh, these rifles are just targeting dummies, and they're also medic dummies at the same time. That is, in real life, Surgeon Simulator, if you ask me. Well, here's Bane trying to apply pressure here on the southern side. Moving the tank a little bit ahead just to scout. Let's see what's there. But doesn't see any activity so he thinks that there's nothing there. But maybe the last two yep. But there is something there. And there's army. There's uh, Andrew just redirecting his army from the north side to the southern side. But Bane still had an army there. Seems like he's going to ignore the expansion and go straight to the main. Which might be luck. Well, actually Andrew is going offensively as well. Um, it's going to give Bane a hard time here on the south side of the map. Bane has a radar dome already. He's rotating, yep. Oh, and Bane also managed to get this army around as well. And now the main is going to be attacked from two sides here, wow. Good flame tower. Andrew is just 
I'm going straight for Bane's main here. Bane still has a decent army, but that is a giant infantry blob. Supported with three heavy tanks, they can dish out a lot of damage here. And Bane is not in the best position for defending his main. Andrew is going to retreat a part of his army. Just to keep his main secure. Not sure what he's doing. He's trying to get more eco along the way. He sniped the SD, so I think he's happy with that. Meanwhile, yep, Bane went straight up to tier 3. And here comes Tanya. Even though she got nerfed, she's still pretty strong as you can see here. She's still able to chase infantry down. I'm taking that. Coming from Andrew. He's a little bit trapped here. And he's going to be cleaned up. Well, Andrew is launching his attack on the expansion from Bane here on the north side of the map. The boxes from Bane aren't being micro. Could have been really nice. There's not a lot of rockets here. Would have reduced the danger of that army significantly, I would say. A small idle harvester here. Meanwhile, there is Tanya leading the assault, and Bane is emerging forces here with the forces that just cleaned up that army from Fight Andrew that are trying to fight. And Tanya is going straight in, cleaning up that infantry. Oh, I was about to say he doesn't care about the heavy tank, but there is the hero of the day. For Angie's army, the heavy tank that crushed the woman. If you take it out of context, that is really weird, but yeah. In this case, he did the army. Angie's sending his heavy tanks forward to do some scouting. There's lots of rockets and there's artillery support from Bane, but I don't think it's enough to take out this giant infantry bomb, and especially not if the heavy tanks aren't dead. Yep, that expansion is completely taken over, but here comes Tanya number two. Can she do it? Heavy tank once again goes forward and she's sitting right next to trees again. And how, she, how did she survive that? She's getting killed by her own RTs as well. And she gets destroyed by a heavy tank once again. That was nicely done from Anju. Anju kept Tanya away from that infantry. While the infantry was just cleaning up the expansion, and Tanya even died as well. Once again, there's Bane coming from the same side, it seems like. I was about to say, I think he put a, a spy in the racks here, but I don't, I don't think that's the case. No, no. Alright, there's Angie trying to harass as well. On the opposite side of the map here. Bane retreats his harvest in some time. Should be able to clean it up. Yeah, there's Tanya as well, and that is going to be an efficient cleanup for Bane here. Which puts him nicely ahead. I was about to say, did I see a demo truck there? But it doesn't seem to be the case. Let's get over to production real quick. Uh, we don't have Radar Dome yet from Anju at all, and he's facing tier 3 allied forces here. That is pretty intense. Here's Bane trying to go for the cleanup, but there's still three static defenses with a Tesla coil. Yeah, these are very interesting here. Meanwhile, Anju is harassing the northern expansion from Bane, and he's trying to defend his southern expansion here. Bane is pushing with Artis. And I, I think Tanya went down. And I hear her now up north. Oh! Wait, I don't think she went down. She's got some support. She has veterancy too right now. And if you get her to max veterancy, she kinda is similar to before she got nerfed in my opinion. Which is now pretty rewarding if you get her. Anyways, lots of idle harvesters here for Anju and a lot of them working on dead patches. Let's see if he's working on trying to restore his eco here. Nope, he is stalling. And Bane's looking pretty well. Loading 6k here. So has kept his eco save this entire time. But Anju has cleaned up this expansion. So it's looking pretty good. 
solid. Yes. His eyes solid. I don't have a lot of lots of cash. But it's okay. I have big mustard. Anyways, we've got longbows coming out for Bane. It's going to give him a lot of air support here too. I was about to say kill a lot of idle harvesters. And thank god Bane has a cloning device, because my god a lot of Tyans have died during this battle. Ooh. That was one nasty shot, but he has to retreat here. Because Andrew is pushing with the heavy tank. But he has kept the artillery alive, but I don't think it's going to survive that much longer. Here comes the ranger, I'm, I'm guessing it has another woman inside of it, and they die, they both die. Oh, here goes Tanya number 5 I think, and now this expansion will be overwhelmed, along with Bane's tech. Everything is sitting here, SD, tier 3, radar dome, and a decent amount of expansions, or like 4 patches, and Bane is calling the GG. Andrew fought all his way through that with just SD tech versus allied tier 3 with lots of tiny but my god the heavy tanks did a lot of work there and uh, Andrew just kept on pushing that was a good first game lots of action let's hope that the second game and the third game will be as excellent as the other battle control terminated boys let's get straight into game number two and see what Bane has in store for us. I told you guys, it's fucking gross. Yep, and you're just pointing out what happened in the last game. And my god, we're having an exciting start of this second game. We, they are both going for a rack skip here on the map of Winding Woods, which obviously is a very rack skip heavy map. I believe this map has had during this season, which is probably something that our reporter could uh, investigate, but I think this map has seen the most rack skips this entire season compared to all of the other maps. But hey. It tends to work out on this map, it's a pretty huge map, there's a lot of distance between both players and there's not that much of objectives to capture, there's only two oils and a hospital. But they are really distant as well. So yeah, the map does allow for more rack skipping and it, it pays off obviously. Yeah, very interesting. This is this is perfect for casters, right? Perfect. Not a lot to be told. The only thing I could, I mean, maybe you could, that I could tell you guys is that if you're going for a rack skip and you have completely nothing to do, just like me, I think the best you think you could do is actually micro your harvester, which is actually what we're seeing here from from Andrew. I think. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, yeah. Also, I'm not entirely sure if I like that. Uh, War Factory placement. I do like that it's right next to the ore patch, which, which is really good. But I also think that that would have been maybe a better placement for the ref. Although, if he would maybe micro his harvester to clean this up, and he would be able to place the ref in the middle here, which I which I like the most, to be fair, because then that's that's to me the ideal ref placement for late game, or at least that's what I've been told. Light tank from Bane in Angie's base. Angie has a flak this time, so he can't do much about the light tank here. The light tank is going to be able to block. There's the rocket soldier coming out, and no production time lost there. Although he is losing power, but it's not going to be enough to put him in low power mode. Wait, what? 
Oh, wait, oh, wait a minute. We're seeing two war factories here. Still no racks from Bane. What is going on here? My tank took a lot of damage. Surprisingly, timing didn't really work out, but it should be good. Andrew is going to have a pretty decent timing. He's already up on three Rexes as well. And he's on six Harvesters. Meanwhile, Bane is on six Harvesters as well, but he went for double War Factory here instead. Instead of the heavy infantry build. So let's see how that is going to work out. And he's going to have a decent timing as well, pretty similar to Double Riff, even just slightly faster than that. There's a Ranger from Bane, going to do some scouting. Meanwhile, Andrew is going to move over to this side, which is pretty common. This patch, I would say, is mainly used for the main MCV later on in the game. Ooh, there's the main MCV once again getting caught off guard here by Andrew's flak. And the flak is doing some amazing damage here. Can't Bane. Ooh. Bane was able to deploy in time. And Andrew is going to lose his flak. But he did some decent damage. Fortunately, it's not going to matter that much. Andrew isn't going to be able to punish that. If he had his army close, then maybe he could have been able to do some damage to the MCV. Because maybe it's a coincidence or not, but I don't think Bane... No, Bane didn't have a full box to it up. So it could have been pretty possible to snipe the MCV, and that would put Bane really behind. Alright, Bane trying to fill out the middle here. That's a huge army from Andrew, but smart call. Putting his infantry behind the static defense to reduce uh, the casualties. Bane is being really aggressive here. Obviously, he can make a lot of medium tanks already. I was just about to say, this seems so tank heavy, but yeah, he's already got those uh, those two war factories out. Now he's spamming Raxes. So he's going to have a lot of medium tanks. And Andrew doesn't have a lot of rockets in that army, so it's going to be very hard for Andrew to deal with that. Well, yep, he's going to steal a heavy tank. Link. Fortunately, he doesn't have more mechanics, so he's not really able to repair the tanks during action, which would have been really nice. But yeah, so many tanks already. Oh, there's Andrew in the north, going for a flank. Almost killed a harvester here. This harvester barely survived. But Andrew didn't lose anything there. Choose to doesn't push any uh, to not push any further. There's Bane setting up an attack as well, but he's going to instantly get a harvester here and catch Andrew off guard. Andrew does have defenses set up. He has, a t he has an army ready, but let's hope he doesn't lose it like that. Seems to be a pretty good clear. He only lost one harvester. And he might lose a second one here. Nope. Bane doesn't want to risk it. Oh, well, he did lose a second harvester. He had a nice multi prong. Yeah, Bane can afford to split off a lot of tanks here. Medium tanks are fast, they're good for harassing. Especially like in pairs or in groups of three. Pointing out that Andrew is struggling a little bit here. Has a couple of idle harvesters because of all the action that went down. Did. That rifleman killed the harvester that survived with a pixel. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That is insane. Meanwhile, Bane is setting up a flank once again, but he should also pretty well, uh, restore his eco. He has three harvesters just chilling there, doing nothing. How is his eco looking? Yeah, not the best for having eight harvesters. Still, we've got some even numbers here. And it seems like Andrew is threatening to take the main down. There's... There's pretty much nothing there for Bane. Just a couple of tanks. It's not going to be enough. Can Bane make it in time? He still has an MCP here to deal some damage with the pillbox, which is what he's going to do. Oh, and he's going for the retreat here. But he's going to suffer a lot of casualties just by doing that. Bane's attack has been pretty efficient here. Three harvesters have been sniped. And a lot of the tanks are maybe going to find their way out. Maybe not. Bane is more focused on this side of the map. Oh. But a Bane game is never complete without a Bane MCV. And it seems like that is going to be the case. Like I said, it's never complete without a Bane MCV. Maybe we should have some statistics about that as well. How many Bane MCVs happened during Raggle? And then more specifically, how many Bane MCVs happened for Bane during Raggle? But I don't think it's going to matter that much. Andrew has suffered a lot of losses during these engagements and uh, especially his eco has suffered a lot of damage as well yep he's also stalling Bane is doing perfectly fine made a new MCV and has decent production times as well just because of those two war factories he had early on so so much tank presence here so much harassing and Bane is just all over the map At this point, he's just using the tanks as scouts, to be honest. So now he knows that Andrew's last remaining army is somewhere in the middle. Bade is going in to take down this last expansion that has been pretty crucial for Andrew's eco and production. And there's the GG from Anju, and it's now one to one. So we're going to the final game between these two guys. I think this is, yep, this is the match for the third place decider. I think it is. Battle control. So at least it's going to make a huge impact. Let's get straight into it. See if Anju can make a comeback and turn this around once again in his favor, or can Bane sustain? there is more early game action about to take place between Anju and Bane. This is game number three if you're tuning in later than earlier. Does that make sense? Fuck it, it does in my head. But this is game number three on the Regal Master playoffs between Anju and Bane. Both players going for Raxus here this time. Bane is going in very aggressive towards Anju's oil. But Anju is already there of course gonna have some nice rifleman clean uh, position there in one cell moving them carefully forward yep and he's using one rifleman to abuse the vision of that rifleman he's pretty much sacrificing the rifleman but obviously because they can see further because of that rifleman he's abusing that to snipe some riflemen and I think they traded equally there 
Well, and you even traded better. But I think during that last engagement, he got one loss for sacrificing that, and they sniped one because of the vision advantage. Well, it seems like Angel was going War Factory first after all, and he did a pretty nice job to scare Bane off like that, considering Bane went double ref. And he's going for three medics here early on. So, uh, pretty heavy investment here, but affordable, as you can see. Has to be a little bit more careful later on, though, when he's going to invest in his uh, War Factory. Yeah, and I wouldn't advise to invest in a pillbox if you're going to invest in three medics. Because I think he went for like 17 rifles total, three medics, followed by his three rockets. It is doable, uh, but not sure if he can do it like in a row, if you know what I'm saying. Alright, there's Anju already with the early flak truck from the War Factory first build. Let's see if he can apply some pressure. Obviously the flak is not going to be able to do much here because of the three medics. They can just heal through the damage. And he also has three rockets as well. So in terms of mac macro and preparation, Bane is on point here in this game. truck isn't going to be able to do much here. There's once again the light tank from Bane, which is a pretty good choice. Let's see where he's heading to. Yep, he's going to be taking the initiative here. He's going straight for Andrew's, Andrew's oil. Going for that free kill. You know, Andrew's doing some scouting, see if he can do something about that oil in the back. But I think he's going to need this flak here just for that vision advantage. Also, note wording, or word noting I should say. Wow. Anyways, Andrew doesn't have any rockets here to deal with this light tank. Oh, well. You okay, know, almost making a mistake here, but yeah. Andrew can't do anything about that oil being destroyed. Considering he didn't have any rockets to deal with the light tank, so he was going to be shredded by this army. If he decided to go. It seems like Bane is just going to rotate and either go harass the harvesters here, or he's going to take out this other oil first. Yep, he's going to go for the other oil first. And Andrew is going to retaliate and he's going to do the same thing, because obviously there's not a lot of presence from Bane now on his own orders. So that is a good call. Still be aware of this army, yep, seems like he's going to. Nice decision making from Andrew here. Let's see what Bane is going to do. Bane only has a light tank, which dies pretty fast versus heavy tank. If this light tank dies, and Andrew is getting a pretty decent army here, there's not a lot of rockets in this in this army block, there's a big chance that this army can get cleaned up. Which isn't going to be looking pretty for Bane if that happens. Anyways, let's go over to the combat tab. It's pretty even right now, not a lot of action has gone down. In terms of eco, Andrew is stalling though. Ooh, there's the light tank going for the crushes with the perfect setup. was nicely done from Bane. There's Andrew abusing the flak. He hasn't done much with the flak to begin with in terms of, in terms of the value just Bane got out of that light tank. That was really good. But he didn't achieve much in terms of damage. He did take out the oil. But... The light tank made it possible for the army to escape, or in this case, to fight another day. But 
Angie was playing around with his scout. I think he has second thoughts about if that army ever left or not. But I think he thinks that it was gone. Because he did send the, the scout over to the left side of the map. And he, he was probably thinking like, hmm, maybe they already passed. But no, my friend. Like I said, they are waiting to fight another day. Andrew has had enough. He's going to take the initiative this time. A pretty decent army here. This seems to be going to help them support. Nope, it's going to be setting up eco here. Meanwhile, Bane is taking an aggressive position in the middle of the map on the left side. Threatening to come closer and closer to the main. That's a lot of medium tanks already. I was about to say, is Bane on the two war factories? But no, doesn't seem to be the case this time. Interesting army positions here. Unfortunately, Angie is going to go face forward into one of those pillboxes. Gives base Bane a chance to reposition. And this is going to be very interesting. Oh, Bane is deciding to merge. It's going to help out. It's a pretty good choice, unless if Anju retaliates. Brings this army in a good position to deal damage to the main, but it doesn't seem like that is going to be the case. And that will mean that Bane will have a chance to clean up this army pretty efficiently without taking that many losses himself. Although, he did pull that army forward a little bit too soon. But yeah, this is what I was talking about. As you see, that. Bane removed that army from this side of the map, so he has complete freedom. And he's going to be setting up a flank as well. But that flank isn't going to matter if Andrew cannot stop this. Because Bane is moving in very aggressively with all these tanks and a huge infantry blob. So with uh, two medics in between there. So yeah, he has to be fast about it. There's not a lot of defense here from Bane. And I don't think he saw that passing by the oil here. This is going to be tough for Bane. But Hanju also has to do some defending here. Alright, Bane is routine here. Mission accomplished. He did lose a lot of time here in taking out the main. Regardless, he's going to get the SD here. Followed by some refs. Probably going to get the War Factory as well. Yep, without a doubt here. And he's going to get some key structures with that. And getting a small advantage over Bane. But how is it looking army-wise? Well, still pretty equal, I would say. Bane up 3k. And there's Angie now. Capitalizing on that attack has forced Bane to retreat everything he had and now Andrew is going for the expansion here in the middle. Smart choices are being made here by Andrew in terms of positioning with a nice split forcing Bane to decide which army he's going to take out first and that army is going to go for the main well the natural expansion from Bane I would say with double mine ore patch and three harvesters. That is something you don't want to lose in this day of the game. choice from Andrew, he had a nice setup here with his army, but he moved his heavy tank forward without infantry support, allowing the ruckus to snipe out, to snipe the heavy tank. Probably should have left it where it was and just moved the uh, infantry a little bit forward. Anyways, they did some damage, I mean Andrew did some damage over here as well, killed the harvester and he killed the rift, and that is pretty terrible for Bane's eco, I would say. Yep, immediately switching to building more rifts should be able to enjoy that middle patch as well. It seems like he has pushed off Andrew from this expansion. Man, what a game so far. Andrew is indeed making a comeback here. There he is moving the MCV pretty aggressively, going for a base push. It's 
flame tower right in that rifleman's face. That guy got roasted, literally. And then he's moving everything he has to prevent this from happening. Man, don't forget, Vayne's main has been completely cleaned up. Surprising that he's still in the game, but he still has a decent army and he's producing a light tank right now. He's going straight in for the expansion, but I don't think this is this is going to be an efficient trade for him. Let's find out and see. Says what oil goes down. That's a very nice concave from Bane actually. Concrete walls were deployed, they're not going to matter that much. I think they were from Angel, yeah, and he decides to sell the MCV instead. Got completely overrun there. Here's Angel on the left side trying to deny an expansion from Bane here with three harvesters one skin working now getting pulled back and Angel has other problems he's sending in the harvesters one by one oh dear lord I was about to say they're not going to be able to crush that much the third harvester going down yikes and that turnaround just in a split of a couple minutes Bane's main got completely destroyed but a couple of bad engagements for Angel completely turned it around. There he is trying to rebuild his eco on the left side of the map right now. Doesn't have any MCV or pretty much any army presence to defend from this army. And there's the GG. And the winner is Bane in this match. After a pretty convincing first game from Anju. And after that a pretty convincing game from Bane I would say. Followed by what I thought was going to be a pretty convincing game for Angie as well after wiping that entire main. But no. Bane didn't give up. Fought back. And came out on top. The winner for tonight, Mr. Bane. Battle control terminated. Well done, man.